So you're thinking about getting into the wedding space, either with photography or filmmaking, and you really just don't know where to start. Well, these five tips helped me along the way, and I hope that they help you as well. So tip number one, know your gear. Now, I know this seems like kind of like obvious, but really you should know your gear. And when I mean know your gear, you shouldn't be having to fumble between your menus, looking for specific things or whatever. You should have quick menu set up and know your gear really in and out. And um, knowing your menu system, whether you shoot on like Sony or something like that, that has a confusing menu system or having um, your quick menu set up is really going to help you along the way. And then also just knowing the basic rules of photography, whether it's, you know, knowing the exposure triangle or just knowing how to properly set up your camera is super important. Don't jump into weddings until you know this. All right. Tip number two. Now, if you already have learned your gear and maybe you're into your like third or fourth wedding, this is where tip number two comes in. And this is planning and communication with your brides. Um, this is super important and something that honestly, I still struggle with to today. Um, but you know, having good, strong communication with your brides or your planners or whatever it is throughout the day or throughout the process of booking is super important. Um, you should know when you're going to be taking out your bride for portraits or knowing when certain things are going to happen. Now, I talked a little bit about this on my podcast, The Photographer Diaries, about timelines and how I personally do not use timelines. Timelines for me are a good way to basically know the day in a snapshot and then move on. All I need to know is the key moments. I need to know when I'm there, when I leave, and when the important shit happens. So again, going back to communication, just know these things and I think that this will help you out throughout the day. Tip number three, and this one is um, pretty important, and it's don't be a dick. And what I mean that is don't show up to the wedding. If you're a filmmaker, a wedding filmmaker, don't show up to the wedding thinking that you are more important than the photographer. Most likely you are the last person hired and the couple really probably doesn't care about you. And this is just being me being 100% honest and with my experience. Now, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes the couples might, you know, really want the wedding film or hired you specifically on your style or whatever it is. But the rule of thumb is don't show up and be a dick. Um, you know, show up and as soon as you meet the photographer, introduce yourself, introduce your company and just show good face. Like don't show up with an ego or anything like that. And especially when you're going into the ceremony or into the reception and you need to talk to the DJ and talked about this as well. Don't be a dick to the DJ. Show up and introduce yourself. Um, before you even need to plug anything in, you should be reaching out to the DJ, shaking his hand, saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm going to be plugging into the audio board, or is it okay? Where do you prefer me to plug in? All that sort of thing. Um, this is super important. Not only does it just, you know, show that you're a good person and that you're trustworthy and that, like, you know, a planner will want to hire you again or refer you to another person, um, it's going to open up some doors in the long run with photographers and planners. So keep that in mind. Okay, tip number four is stay minimal. Don't bring an excessive amount of equipment to your wedding. Don't bring things that you're not going to use. Make sure you're bringing the essentials, your camera, a backup camera, a couple lenses, lights, and audio gear. Don't go crazy, don't go overboard. And um, yeah, because you don't need it in the long run. 90% of the times when I film my weddings, I bring three cameras, I use two of them only for the ceremony. Right after the ceremony, they get packed up, maybe keep one out for speeches. And I run the rest with one camera the rest of the day. So don't overcomplicate it. Don't bring a bunch of gear that you don't need. Um, you know, there are filmmakers out there, Justin Porter for one, who brings crazy amount of gear to their weddings. And the thing is though, they need that equipment and the way that they shoot, the style that they shoot, it makes sense for them. But if you're just starting out, don't overcomplicate it, bring what you need and that's it. Tip number five is be assertive on the wedding day. And this doesn't mean be a dick, like I said earlier not to be, but this means like 
be assertive. Don't just piggyback on what the photographer is doing. Make sure you have some clear visions that maybe you've already communicated with the photographer. And when you show up, you know, make sure you get those shots that you want, um, but also get the shots that you need. There's a difference between shots that you need and shots that you want. If you don't have the time to get the shots that you want, make sure you're getting all the safety shots that you absolutely need. And this is when piggybacking on the photographer definitely um, can help you out because you're going to get the shots that you need. And, you know, if there's time or if you've already planned out to get the shots that you want, you can do that if that makes any sense. Um, so typically what I will do at a wedding is I'll show up and I will let the photographer know that there's a couple shots that I always try to get and make sure that they're cool with it. So when we go out and do portraits and we're doing all this stuff, the photographer usually takes a lead. I stand behind him or her and I get the shots that I need by piggybacking off whatever the photographer is doing. The problem with that is a lot of photography shots are posed and there's not a lot of movement. Now with wedding filmmaking, you want movement, you need movement. So I will get those shots and either if I'm on a gimbal or handheld, I'm trying to create movement by moving my body. Um, and if there's just not a lot of movement in the shots, I'll always tell a photographer like, hey, can I do that again? I just need a little bit of movement. I need them to do this or do that. And usually 95% of the time, the photographer is totally cool with it. Not only does it help the photographer out because they're getting shots that they're not thinking about because they're so used to static shots that they're getting these lovely motion shots now. So, so anyways, guys, I really hope that these tips helped you out. If you did like the content, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and it really helps the algorithm, all that YouTube stuff. And yeah, be sure to follow me on social media. I have an Instagram. It's at Hayden Harlow. That's all my wedding work. And then I also have a podcast called The Photographer Diaries. We are on YouTube and all your podcast places. So yeah. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.